Right, here we go, round two of uh, taking this engine apart. So we've still got the cooling system to go. Uh, the starter motor has to come off. Uh, engine mounts. You can probably crack off the bolts between the gearbox and the engine. Uh, just in case I decide I need to remove that. If I want to split the two, I am as yet undecided. Uh, this side's pretty much done apart from that heater hose. And again the cooling system, so... Uh, yes, we shall try and free off that starter first, I think. Starter off. That's the starter motor off. Those flyweed, uh, flywheel teeth don't look terribly happy. Indeed, it all looks a bit. Uh, it looks a bit knackered to me. Oh well. Let's see if this screw will come undone. It looks like it's been fastened for about a thousand years. Hey. Surprisingly painless. I might put less of a fight than the other one which I had to cut off. Uh, Christ, getting there now. Coolant system. Um, obviously all the coolant will be drained and caught in tubs and absolutely not dumped onto the street. Uh, that would be ecologically unsound. Right, now I'm going to try and get the radiator out. Smaller than a half inch. Seven sixteen volts. That's one. That's two. That is just spinning 
captive nut. I assume they're captive nuts on the other side. Well, that nut at least is certainly captive. Right, let's free off the other side. Horn is going to get in the way, but oh well. One. Words. Three. Perfect. Right. Well, that was easy. Uh, have to get rid of that first, I think. To get to that top mount. As I recall, there's a very, very tiny nut on the side of that, yep. Two, three, uh, maybe it's a metric size. Production Lucas 9H Horn. A bit of water in that. Oh. One dolomite radiator out. A bit battered looking. Coolant looking quite horrible. Mostly rust. Uh, I will probably take these out to assist in engine removal, uh, but I'll wait until the bonnet's off for that. I don't think there's any particular rush. I can totally do with taking the fan off, but again, that's probably easier with the bonnet off. Getting there. Progress is progress, as they say, or as I say, I don't know. Do you ever start poking and then wish you hadn't? We've all been here. It's not actually as bad as I thought it would be in some places. So looking at this isolated patch here, that's the repair panel. That's I don't know if that's like a, a plug weld or a rivet or a fucking self-tapping screw or what that is. I don't know. Anyway, that's whatever they used to fix the actual repair panel onto the car. This is original metal and it looks like they've probably cut it about here and then hammered it in so it's out of the way and then just fillered all the way over it which I mean I suppose it will have been an acceptable repair 30 years ago but it is causing me rather a lot of remedial work now because that's quite poor and a shame really because the underside of the car is really very solid it's only this that's bad and chances are the original rot that this was meant to repair didn't extend this far back into the wing. Usually it was 
It was only the, the edges of these that rust and then it goes out about here. And a lot of this rust, like here, would probably not have happened unless this poor repair had been carried out in the first place. Which is a bit of a shame, but oh well. It does at least look fairly easy to fix. Well, I got carried away. Suspicion confirmed. The 1300s original wheel arches are indeed still in there, behind the repair panel. For fuck's sake, no wonder it's rotted so fucking badly if the entire arch is in there. The actual funny thing is, it doesn't look that bad. Uh, yeah, I may have got carried away here and made a bit of a mess. Goodness me. Automotive archaeology. I found a Triumph Dolomite underneath my Triumph Dolomite. Right, so in summary, uh, one repair panel here, up to this point there, that's all good metal, so that's fine, and then another TDC panel covers this area down to here, and then that section. So there might be a couple of little localised patches to get in here, but that should be all fairly achievable. I imagine the will, because this is quite... This has gone quite flimsy uh, due to the fact that it's been obviously trapped in between two sections of metal and it's a sort of a dirt trap to begin with. Um, thankfully, it looks like the sills haven't had the same sort of treatment because they fit rather too well to be cover sills. And again, this is all going the same way. You see the rivet marks up here and down. Well, this side's already been replaced and fixed by myself. So, um, yeah, what I would say is this counts as preventative maintenance. It had to come off at some point, might as well be now. Uh, the original arch, I say original, the repo arch, new old stock, you can't actually get these arches anymore, it's actually a bit of a waste of a 
we like to repair panel to have put it on the car. That's the repair arch. And then the back of it. Still with sticker attached on the back. Amazing stuff. The amount of filler work they'll have put into this probably would have been faster and easier to have simply cut it off and welded it. It's bizarre, but it's the joy of dodgy garages for you. Oh well. Signing off. Next time, hopefully, we'll be taking the engine out. <laughs>